15 minute talk about a topic of DIY bio interest. I would love to hear that from you too. Um, developed, um, I helped him develop a structure for how to teach um, Legos, the, 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 the actual STEM part of the Legos, mm -hmm. um, but it never took off, so. <laughs> but um, he, so what he did was instead of letting go of that material, he's developing them into individual classes and, and, and teaching them that way. So, you know, no material goes to waste. That's my policy. <laughs> you develop it, what you plan out, but you just switch a little bit to the left. And there's, there's just find a group of people who's excited about that. Right? And then this is our DIY bio. That's a new thing. And we just had a meeting trying to figure out uh, with Fred, trying to figure out how are they going to fit in here mm -hmm. and what are they doing. And so that's going to be a very different model, is what we found out. Um, but they're going to be doing so level one bio bi bi biology. I didn't even know they were in levels, right? Oh, you're talking right? about the room over there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the yeah. stuff we were in earlier. So, um, you know, how, it's kind of like, who comes first, the ch which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Until you start, you know what I mean? You attract the, the, the what I explained to them is, the meetups attract a different uh, group of people than the actual hands-on events, than the classes. Those are three different groups of people. The people who are gonna come and actually use the equipment that they're proposing, the scientific equipment, they've kind of stopped coming. And they, but they will, will come back. They'll only come back when the equipment is here and they, you know what I mean? That's those group of people, the guy who came last week and he said that his son has cancer and he has some ideas of experiments that they could conduct. Mm -hmm. We might be disturbing his son who took a lot of the negative energy from losing a son to cancer or having a child with cancer and converted that into positive stuff to help other people. So he's got all these ideas about cancer research that he would like to do himself on a DIY basis. He doesn't have all the background to get that done, so he'd like to partner with you know some of these PhD types to to, to flesh those out. That's perfect for what they have in mind. Um, and they do have some equipment already donated. They just need to get it all together in a place where then people can start doing that sort of thing. So um, so that's what we talked to Fred about. I chose Fred for obvious reasons. Fred is connected through his brother to biology research. I did not know that. Oh yeah, um, the, the bird. Yeah. The, oh, that's his brother. Yeah, that's his brother. Gotcha. Yeah. So I thought that was a natural connection. Plus, Fred is very active with the rhino, and now they're doing something with elephant. This gentleman is over here. Actually, turned out to be working on a, a camera system that would be put in the jungles, to and it would automatically go off when a human came by, and send transmit the picture back to the base, and um, so that. You know, the poachers are tracking the elephants so then they can come out and investigate well, why is a human in that area without permission, oh, that kind of thing. So that's what he's actually working on. So they're going to be doing, um, trying to do kind of a consortium where they're doing wildlife conservation type of, so of technology solution. It's, pretty it's, cool. kind of, it's already being done it's very cool. here. So yeah. it's kind of a natural extension of that. And then, you know, the drone class. I think I discussed that from Bryce's thing, the drone class, where they were trying to solve the problem of um, uh, mine, landmines. And they came up with some really good drone solutions. Yeah, that, that. The students were given a list of problems to solve, where yeah. they could come up with it. So like, the biology department came up with a list of biology problems they could solve with a drone and um, my, land mines and also mining was another mining is another huge thing that they're using drones for right now and also um, what's that like when you do ge geography surveys but they're going all the way down not just the topological maps but 
you know, when they put a sonar pulse into the ground and get Yeah, the location, they're using yeah. drones pretty heavily for that as well. Okay. So, and of course, wildlife conservations as well. So a lot of stuff that I didn't know was going on in drones. So the students were tasked to, to um, solve one of these problems. Okay. Um, and they, they were, so they got a bunch of different departments from JMU. One, one of them was um, in history. History? <laughs> what problem can you solve in history with drones, I asked. So um, these were, ex, the drones were x-raying buildings. Uh, in like Baltimore or something, you know, they or wherever it was, they have mm -hmm. a lot of older buildings, and they have um, integrity issues. And so, what they were doing was tracking the building's integrity issues over time. And so that could then drive some other solution, or you know, just tracking the changes in the building over time, but from an X-ray type of perspective. The stuff people need to solve in this world, <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah, you know. I mean, I'm like, oh, okay. So they're gonna map the area? No, they're X-raying the actual buildings um, that are on the registry, you know, the historical registry. We're giving away that many monitors. Do you know what? I can take two. Yes. They work. There's, there's, yes, they do. Yeah. Counting my equipment, fortunately, um, the day before. And realize where are the keys? There was like a zillion keyboards in mice, so I didn't bother to put them in a secure location because I was never worried that there wouldn't be any. Mm -hmm. And I mean, literally, there are a million of them. So I came in and I was like, huh, that's strange. <laughs> Not a keyboard. There was a mouse and a keyboard right there. That was it. <laughs> Not even like an accidental keyboard and mouse. Anyway, literally, there were zero keyboard and mice. Me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take snippets for a web page. Okay. Okay. I should put my hat on like I, <laughs> I rode bikes here. Oh, God. You did, didn't you? I did. Yeah. I rode my bike to work here. Yeah. I think it's great. So, no, you, you have we color. Have love color this place. This is like been the best find you can possibly imagine. It is, my son over there calls it, everyone here, he calls them his species because he just loves the environment, the people, everything about it. But we found Jennifer to help us with um, Science Olympiad. And my daughter and her friend had never done anything like this before. I mean, they didn't know first thing about engineering and um, although she loves math and science at school and um, yeah and they um, we found Jennifer and her son helped us build this electric car and they competed yesterday in the event and they were number five out of 47 cars That's, um, pretty good. and um, they did amazing, and they had to do a lot of troubleshooting right on the spot, mm -hmm. which they the could only do. There. Yeah, but they couldn't have they done it without all of the long, hard hours that our coaches spent with them. It was amazing. So, yeah. Very yeah. smart girls. The story that they told me, a lot of leadership, a lot of... I mean, then they were pretty timid when they came. I mean, oh, yeah. you should have seen, the first thing we did was a take apart, because I think, I really feel strongly that's the first thing that you do with kids, is take things apart. And they were terrified. They were like, oh, you want me to cut the wire? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so for them to come in just a few short months to where mm -hmm. they were, I mean, the, the field was not set up correctly. Mm -hmm. And so our robot has a color sensor, mm -hmm. Right, and so they had to adjust for that. Uh, the tape with, in the instructions was supposed uh -huh. to be red, I mean blue, but it was red. And so they adjusted their program. This is C programming. And they did that themselves. And um, you know, so they've gone from where they can't even open a pro program and they're, they're like changing their drivers and things like Wasn't that. that Just amazing. Uh, they have some classes that are electives, but I don't think they learn it um, in in their science classes. There's a difference. With so. programming, you can go to a class 
to be introduced to programming. Mm -hmm. But you actually learn programming by doing it over and over yeah. and having it blow up on you and having blue screens of death and the smoke escaping, as we say. That's really the way that you learn programming. You really mm -hmm. can't say... And the, the other thing about programming is you either lose it or you use it. I mean, th this is a building full of people who have forgotten programming languages that they haven't used in years. That's just a natural cycle of programming. It changes over time. Mm -hmm. But C programming is one of the toughest ones. But we use that a lot in the Arduino. So for them to be able to analyze their program and figure out where they needed to change, that's yeah. a huge skill. But it's a logic skill. It's not really a programming skill. It's a logic yeah, skill. Yeah. Oh, exactly. yeah. I love this. You can see in the, when you get, I don't have my glasses on, but you can see them in the background. It's just great picture. <laughs> oh, there it yeah, is. Oh, so this is the it's blister. actually yes. running. Yes. Oh, wow. And, and this is the judges. Um, you see? See? Okay, so yeah. the, the start line, so this is the end line? Yes, that's the end line. So there's blue right in the middle. Right. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. Wow. So they adjusted for that. Yes. That's critical that thinking amazing? right there. Yep. Okay. So. And they couldn't do that just a month ago. Oh, no. <laughs> just a month ago. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So they made very a very good decision not to add to the robot, but to get to their no robot, to get to know their robot better mm -hmm. instead of adding features, which is yeah. not a natural thing. Uh, only girls would have made that decision. <laughs> I swear to God, only girls. Only girls would have made That's that mature so of a decision funny. not to improve, not to add features to the robot, yes. but to... It's so tr it's true. Yeah. It's true. That was a very mature decision. Yeah. And they should thank their coach for letting yes. them make that decision. Yes. Right yes. or wrong, yes. it yes. was their decision, I figure. Yep. You know. <laughs> I didn't 100% agree yes. with it because yeah. I tend to be more boyish when it comes to equipment. Uh -huh. I want to add. So <laughs> I, I have to restrain myself. So That's I had funny. to really exhibit a lot of restraint. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, you know, I'm teaching leadership here to girls. I am not teaching robotics necessarily. Yes. They're not going to grow up to be roboticists. Right. They will have a chance to grow up to be leaders, though. That's yeah. more important. Yeah. So and yeah. the confidence in making your own decision. And it paid off. That's hard. It's hard. They're just, right now, they're making huge leaps. It's like, I think, you know, they're just still young in terms of the leadership. And I think, you know, they still need so much, like, affirmation and, you know, yeah, you know, it's just programming. Yeah. I, I was just reading an article by Resnick. Resnick is very big in um, in this uh, makers and, and technology area, and he has a TED video that I was going to blog about. And one of the things he points out is that becoming a programmer is not really the the only reason to teach children programming. Um, that, you know, I mean, grandmothers are learning programming. They're yeah. not going to become right. a big IT programming person. The, the reason, the, there's a lot of other skills that go with this. Programming is kind of instant gratification um, or instant, this didn't work, but I can fix it. Yes. These are all the, the pursuit of getting something right through iterative. Yes. And know, also, it's, it's applied math where. You know, these kids sit in the math class, and they're like, why am I learning this? And then all of a sudden, when they have to apply it, they're like, okay, now yeah. I get why this is important. Yeah. And this um, is the same thing with programming. Uh, you can learn it, and I know all of the examples in my programming classes were accounting. And I never really got it. Anime. <laughs> because I don't know anything about he accounting. He loves anime. This is Jennifer's, this is Bryce's brother, this is Adam. Yeah. Loves anime. Adam does too. Adam was at KatsuCon. Why didn't you respond to my message about KatsuCon? I didn't Con? see it. Oh. I don't know why. I'm not sure I get all your messages. Are you on the kids list? You must not in be. In the what list? The ch kids list. There's chatter no. and then there's kids. No. <laughs> you should join that. That's. 
If it's just for kids, I post it there. Oh, okay. Yeah. If okay. It's just for kids. And it's there's all, there's nobody talking except me practically. Okay. So it's a lot less than chatter. A lot um, less than chatter. So he he made a three D printer here. That was his his thing. Yeah. He built it. Yeah, 